In this nugget, I want to make sure that you can use the common mathematical operators in your Excel formulas. So that's going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. And we'll also work out some percentages. We'll look at the idea of absolute cell referencing. And we'll also see what a formula error might look like and a few other things as well. So I'm just going to pop in a quick formula for our profit here. So typing equals to get into formula mode and then clicking on the cell to put in the cell reference. So sales minus the costs, green tick to accept the formula and then use the fill handle to repeat that all the way along. And you will probably already know that you can quickly do some adding up by selecting the total cells and using auto sum. But it may or may not be obvious to you that when you do these formulas, the cells that you're referencing don't have to be next to each other. So if I want to work out my quarterly total profit, well, type the equals to start the formula. And then I want to add up that cell together with, type the plus, that cell there, type the plus. And don't worry when the formula that you're typing has disappeared off the screen if you've scrolled down. You can still see it here in the formula bar. And then click the green tick to enter, and there's the formula. And you can actually also use the sum function for cells which are not next to each other. So let's just try this example again using the sum function instead. So I'm going to delete that. And when I click the sum function this time, it can't guess what cells I want to add up because there are no suitable numbers close by. So I have to tell it. And it's giving me a clue here in the screen tip because it's saying the different things you want to add up, just separate them with a comma. And they could be individual cells or ranges. So I want to add up that, type the comma, and that, type the comma. Again, scroll down, but don't worry, it's still up there on your formula bar. And click the last one green tick and happily I've got exactly the same result. So two different approaches to do the same thing but now let's imagine that I had got my wires crossed a little bit and I kind of combined those two approaches so I type the equals to go into the formula click the first one then type a comma click the next cell I want to add up type a comma and then the last one green tick to enter oh. But of course, this time Excel can't work it out because I didn't do it right. And I've got an error message. And if you look up in the formula bar, you can see that all I've done is specified those three cell references. I haven't told Excel what to do with them. I haven't put any mathematical operators. I haven't put a function in there. So I should have either have put the sum function in there or put pluses instead of commas. But if it wasn't obvious as to why you'd got this error, then you can click this button here. Quite a few interesting options here, including getting help on this error, which will load help in the task pane on the right hand side. And I have to say, this is really, really useful. Lots of lots of very valid information here. Well worth a look. Also, if it was a more complex formula, you might want to step through the calculation and that will enable you to work out whereabouts in a much longer formula the mistake actually was. And also one more option worthy of note, if you choose the error checking options, you can see there are quite a few settings here to control how Excel works with calculations. So again, worth a look. But I'm just going to step back in time a few steps so that I've got a formula without an error. Right, let's do a few more formulas. And you'll notice looking at my row headings just here, I've got some hidden rows there. So if I just right click to unhide, so you can see that's how you hide and unhide rows. But this is just saving me a bit of time in the video because I've got some extra bits and pieces already populated. But you can see that, let's imagine we get paid a, a preset bonus of three euros or dollars or whatever it is for each store. So I need to work out a new total. So that's easy enough. So it's going to be the original profit plus that bonus, green tick to complete the formula and repeat that all the way along. But it's this formula I wanted to do with you. So my share of this total is actually half. So this is a really good excuse to just do a quick example of a division. So to divide by, you choose the cell reference and then use the forward slash. So divide by two, use the green tick to finish the formula and then repeat that along. So you can see for Manchester, my share that I take home is 31.5 euros or whatever the currency is. But I had to do that by having two separate rows for the bonus and the new total. And I think to myself, I'm sure I can do that all in one go. So for February, I've got exactly the same figures for Manchester. And I reckon I can work out my share in a single formula by adding on the three euro bonus and divided by two. Let's do it. So I type the equals, there's the bonus of three, add it on to that profit and then divide by two, a green tick to finish. And then I think, oh, well, what's gone on here? So I've got 33 as a result here, but the original formula, which had exactly the same numbers, was 31 and a half. So why is that? And it's because I've got multiple operators in the same formula. So this is where you have to be aware that when you are using these multiple operators, Excel will work it out in a particular order. And it'll always do the timesing and dividing first and then the adding and subtracting. So what I need to do, I need to say, ah, oh, well, no, actually, I want you to add the three onto the profit first 
and then divide it by two. So I've put the brackets in to control the order. So green tick to finish the formula. Ah, that's better. I've got the same answer that I had before. So just be aware of that. Let's go back to the January figures. And let's imagine that these figures are euros. So I'm just going to quickly apply a euro number format there. And I want to convert this to UK pounds. And I'm all organized. I've already got the exchange rate ready over here in cell I4. So I think fantastic. Let's do it. So equals my share multiplied by and to get a multiply multiplied by in Excel, it's the little asterisk, so shift 8 multiplied by the exchange rate and then green tick to finish the formula. And then of course I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way along. Oh, and then I get a bit disappointed because I think, well how can that possibly be? I've got no value there for Paris, London and the total. What's going on? But of course remember that when we repeat the pattern of a formula, look at this example, C4 minus C5, that both parts of the formula move on to the next step. So D4 minus D5, E4 minus E5. But for this one, I want each of the my share cells to be multiplied by this one cell, I4. I don't want the I4 part of the formula to move on to the next step of the pattern. And that's what it's done. If I double click on this cell, you can see, sure enough, it's taken D9, which is correct, but moved the I4 cell reference onto J4. And this one, it's moved the reference on further to K4. So I need some way of telling Excel that I do not want the I4 part of this formula to move on to the next step of the pattern. And we do that just by clicking in that cell reference and then by pressing your F4 function key. And what that will do, it will give you some little dollars. And the dollar before the letter will fix the column. And the dollar before the number will fix the row. So having two dollars like that fixes the cell. And if you were to keep pressing F4, you'll see you get different combinations of dollars if you just want to fix the column or just the row. But I need to fix both in order to fix the cell. So green tick to finish that formula. Repeat that all the way along. Ah, oh, fantastic. And if you look at those other cells, you can see, look up at the formula bar, sure enough, the D9, the E9 moves on, but the I4 stays fixed. And of course, the beauty of doing it like this, if this exchange rate were to change, which of course they often do, let's change it to 0.81, then it's a very efficient way of working because all of those figures just updated. Oh, and I guess I should just change the number format to UK pounds. There we go. So this idea of fixing a cell with those dollar signs is known as absolute cell referencing, if you like the proper terms. Let's do an example of a percentage now. So I'm just going to get rid of those bonus figures because let's imagine that now we've been told that our bonus is calculated as 5% of the profit. So again, that's a formula. Type the equals and then simply type 5%. And you can think of when we say of as being times by. So 5% of something means a times by. So I'm just going to type in a little asterisk. So 5% of the profit. Green tick to complete that and then repeat that all the way along. See, it's easy when you know how. Now look over here. I want to pull out the London January profit figure for whatever reason. So the London January profit figure, so this figure here. So I think to myself, well, I'll just copy and paste that. So I've selected the cell, choose to copy it at the top left hand corner here and then click where I want it and then paste it. Oh. And then I think, well, what's going on here? Clearly that's not the same figure. I'm going mad. Well, the reason is that original figure was actually a formula. You can see that in the formula bar. It's doing a formula on the cells directly above it. So therefore, when I copied and pasted it, I took the formula and now that's doing a calculation on the cells directly above it. So that's not what I wanted at all. But look, I can click this little drop down here for the different paste options of which there are many. And I could choose to just paste the value. Ah, that's better. So now I've got 115 euros. But again, look up at the formula bar. You can see that is just as if I had typed in 115. That's a static figure. So if my figures for the London store were to change, let's just make a change to that, which therefore affects the profit, it has not changed that figure that I pasted there because I just took the static figure. So as you might imagine, there's a better way of doing it. So again, if you copy the cell, but this time click the bottom half of the paste button, and we've got loads of paste options, well worth exploring, but choose paste link. So I can see that looks correct, it's the right number, but look up at the formula bar, you can see what it's done there. It's put in the cell reference with the dollar and you could of course have just typed that if you preferred. But actually, just while we're talking about the bottom half of this paste button, I'm just going to digress slightly because there's a really useful option. Let's imagine I wanted these headings, rather than being in a row, I wanted them in a column. So I can copy those and then click somewhere else on the spreadsheet and choose this transpose option. <laughs> really useful. 
But anyway, a few other quick options for your formulas to finish up with. So if I select these cells and look down the bottom of the screen, you'll notice I've got a few other numbers going on here. So this is really useful. Whatever you've got selected, you get to see some information about it down here. So I can see the average, how many numbers and, and the sum. If you right click on that, that's where you control what you've got showing. So you could say, well, I'd like to see the, the maximum number in that range as well, please. So you can choose that. Another useful option on your home ribbon tab, click find and select over on the right hand side here and choose formulas. And I really like this, I find it very useful. This will actually highlight for you all of the formulas in the spreadsheet. So this is especially useful if you're picking up somebody else's spreadsheet and you're trying to work out what's what, so I do like that. Or on the formulas ribbon tab, you can choose to show the formulas because of course normally you can't see the formula until you look up in the formula bar. But if you click the show formulas button, it'll expand everything so you can see all of the formulas it's suddenly like having x-ray vision <laughs> and of course you can click the button again to hide the formulas and also precedence and dependence are sometimes useful so if you want to see the precedence then I'm seeing which other cells affect the cell that I'm clicked on or if I want to see dependence then I can see which other cells does this one affect so this is really useful to understand the impact that your cells have on the rest of your spreadsheet and you can just click remove arrows to remove them so in this nugget, we've learned how to use the four common mathematical operators. We've done a percentage calculation and we fixed that cell reference absolutely when we did the exchange rate example and a few other tips and tricks at the end there. So I reckon you've got plenty of tools in your toolkit now for working on your own formulas. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.